kez daha tekrarlayalım. Ee, İstiklal Caddesi'nde bir patlama meydana geldi. Bu son dakika gelişmesini paylaşalım. The bomb attack on Istiklal Street on November 14, 2022 alarmed the society and spread great concern to the people of Istanbul. For the Turkish people who have not experienced such a bomb attack for a long time, this situation brought to mind the terrorist attacks experienced in the past and the refugee crisis increasing its gravity in Turkey. Since the beginning of the Arab Spring, the democratization protests destabilized many countries and caused global migration. Many people who desire to escape the devastating impacts of civil wars have fled to other nations as refugees, bringing with them a variety of issues. Undoubtedly, because of its geographic location, Turkey is the country that has undergone the most repercussions of this political depression. In this documentary, we are going to inspect the historical evolution and ongoing problems that have surrounded the country since the beginning of this event. The Arab Spring, which started in Tunisia on December 18, 2010, and then spread to other Arab countries, can be described as the beginning and milestone of the crisis. The main reason for the, this movement is the desire to get rid of the effects of the oppressive and authoritarian governments that have been going on for years and to, f to have free human rights. These protests were successful in Tunisia and Egypt, and the leaders Zain al-Abidin ben Ali and Hüsnü Mubarak were forced to relinquish their duties. The events in Syria, on the other hand, started in the Dara region on March 15, 2011, and quickly spread all over the country. In order to overthrow Bashar Assad, the opponents of the regime, the Free Syrian Army, was established and started an armed rebellion. It is funded by various states on both sides, and Bashar Assad has lost control of the crisis. The beginning of arrival of Syrians in Turkey is April 29, 2011. From this date on, the Syrians who first settled on the borders of Turkey in small groups and then in large masses started to rely on the borders of the country. Although the humanitarian needs of the people coming by aid organizations such as Afat and Turkish Red Crescent were met immediately, the main problem was that a long-term program was not made, and it could not be decided what kind of regime would be applied to the refugees. In order to understand this situation, first of all, we need to learn the meanings of the terms that are frequently confused and make an assessment of the borrowing situation accordingly. Migration events can be divided into two categories, legal ones and illegal ones. Legal immigration is immigration where people comply with legal procedures by obtaining a passport and visa. Illegal immigration, on the other hand, is immigrating to the country without permission and unregistered, and this is a very dangerous situation as we will talk about later. For example, the European Union, which is aware of this situation, applies the principle of controlled selectivity and includes people within the borders as a result of intensive security controls. The name given to these people to legally seek protection in the country is asylum. The legal status of the incoming people is also divided into three. The first of these is the immigrant. These people are the people who left their countries for better economic conditions. Such people doesn't have the right of international protection. The second type of people can be referred as refugees. According to the research conducted by the Institute of International Law, this concept is the name given to the people who have left their country for political reasons. Another third situation is people who are in temporary protection status. This protection regime is the name given to regime applied to people who require immediate protection. Turkey, as a member of the 1951 Geneva Convention and the 1967 Protocol, has said that according to these agreements, only people from European countries who seek asylum because of race, religion and national and political issues will be accepted as refugees. In addition, these people do not comply with the criteria of conditional refugee written in Article 62 of Law no uh, Number 6458. For this reason, it was announced on October 2011 that the government would apply rules according to the temporary protection status regime pursuant to Article 10 of the 1994 regulation. This was repeated again in Article 63 of the Law on Foreigners and International Protection Number 6458, which, which was enacted in 2014. 
In this way, many Syrians migrated to Europe by using Turkey as a bridge, and this caused the number of incoming people to increase. Due to the density of people, many European countries have started to control the incoming people more carefully because of security concerns, and have allowed the incoming people to cross the borders within the social and economic resources of the countries. Germany has accepted the majority of refugees, with the arrival of nearly 850,000 people in the country in a short time, Germany declared to other countries that this crisis should be managed together. Although the British Foreign Minister at the time William Hay and the French President said that there were inhuman practices against Syrians made by the Assad regime and that their actions harmed democratic principles, they did not take concrete steps to resolve this crisis. Such countries only took the ones who are better educated and have a better social status and use Turkey as a buffer zone. This situation is seen more clearly in this infographic published by TRT News in November 2021. In addition, many opposition groups emerged in Europe despite the refugee receptions and the rise of nationalists could, could not be prevented. As a result, this situation increased the number of Syrians in Turkey rapidly. In addition, while accepting Syrians to their countries, European Union members took care to accept the most qualified ones and such people made valuable contributions to workforce and potential of European countries. Despite such strict measures and surveillance, protests arose in many countries in Europe and the EU was asked to make these admittances less. Strict security measures were taken to prevent these people from entering Europe and money was transferred to Turkey in the name of aid. In fact, the European Union, which wanted to use Turkey as a buffer zone due to a large number of incoming people, agreed to be a buffer zone at the EU summit held on March 7, 2016, with promises such as accelerating the European Union membership process and improving the work in customs union. The ironic part of this is that although financial aid has been sent, many promises haven't come true and Turkey's entry into the European Union has been halted. But it's intended to send a clear signal to Turkey that EU membership won't happen anytime soon. In other words, as a result, the government of the period was defrauded. Furthermore, many PKK and ISIS militants crossed the border and were stationed in different parts of the country. Due to the open door policy and insufficient security measures that couldn't be taken during these migrations. While these events were taking place, the attacks undertaken by these terrorist organizations in the past years explained the gravity of the situation even better. ISIS terrorist organization killed 34 people in Suruç, 102 people in Ankara, 10 people in Istanbul Sultan Ahmed, 5 people in Istanbul Beyoğlu, 53 people in Gaziantep, and 36 people in Istanbul Atatürk Airport in 11 months between 2015 and 2016. In order to obstruct such developments, to create a safer zone on the Syrian border and to repel terrorist organizations on the border, the Turkish armed forces launched Operation Eurofate Shield on August 24, 2016. Police stations were established in regions cleared of ISIS and PKK PYD control and the security of the region was ensured. In this way, although the number of incoming refugees decreased dramatically, this wasn't enough. The Republic of Turkey's present administration's failure to establish a clear stance on the matter is the main reason contributing to this crisis escalation. Although these individuals are subject to a temporary protection regime, there are no explicit integration measures in place and the separation of asylum seekers from Turkish society worsens the situation and raises societal unrest. Corrupt practices and resentment have also grown as a result of numerous violent incidents against Turkish citizens in recent years. These characteristics of the Syrians, who are capable of attacking Turk residents in the smallest events, have been demonstrated to society in several incidents in our nation in the past. Ankara Altın Dağı'da Suriyeli sığınmacılarla yaşanan kavgada 18 yaşındaki Emirhan Yalçın bıçaklanarak hayatını kaybetti. Olayı duyan mahalle sakinleri protesto için sokağa çıkınca devreye çevik kuvvet polisleri girdi. <gülüyor> Bu iş kötü, 
Okul çıkışında okuldan olmayan birkaç e, çocuk okulu taşlarken bizimkiler de müdahale ediyor. Niye camlara taş atıyorsunuz diyerekten. Orada bir kargaşa oluyor tabii. E, sana ne yaparız ederiz gibisinden. Neyse araya başka arkadaşları girince olay orada aslında bitiyor. Yaklaşık bir 15-20 metre yürüdükten sonra bizim çocuklar, yeğenim arkadan koşarak gelip sol kürek e, kemiğinin altına bıçağı saplıyor. Sizin e, yakınınız mı oluyor? Yakınlığınız neydi? <gülüyor> Yan komşum oğlumun arkadaşı. <gülüyor> ne istediler? Ne istediler? <gülüyor> Yapanları tanıyor musunuz? Gördünüz mü acaba? <gülüyor> Hayır görmedik. <gülüyor> Sadece haberi geldi. <gülüyor> Low income levels, reluctance to integrate into their nations and upbringing in restrictive conditions are additional significant contributors to the rise in crime rates. These people who live far away from Turkish society and continue their lives in their own ecosystems are becoming more and more aggressive and alienated from society every day. One of the main reasons for this situation is that most of the people who prefer to stay in the Republic of Turkey do not have a high education level. Many Syrians, such as doctors, lawyers, and engineers, who have qualified jobs that will benefit Turkish society, have been taken by European countries. This situation causes the state to create new budgets in order to increase the education level of the society and forces the economic conditions of the state. The Syrian migration, which started in 2011, has had serious negative effects on the Turkish economy. The computable monetary costs consist of the official statements of the President and the Minister of Health, aid from EU funds, United Nations funds, World Health Organization funds, and World Food Organization funds. An important source that reflects the cost of Syrians is that in 2017, Recep Akta said that a Syrian refugee costs $301.5. This number is $58.5. $2 billion, considering the cost incurred by registered asylum seekers between 2011 and 2018. However, a variety of $7.1 billion came within the scope of European Union and United Nations aid programs. Finally, it was determined that the Syrians inflicted $8.5 billion in damage to the state. When we sum up these figures, it is possible to say that Syrians caused a total of $59.6 billion to the Turkish economy. The Turkish people who are already grappling with a major economic crisis, unfortunately, have to pay for this humanitarian aid with more taxes. The entry of these people into the country is no longer a conviction and Turkey is filled with many Syrians who want to turn the crisis into an opportunity. Refugees who are aware of this terminological difference between a refugee and an asylum seeker want to be an economic refugee in our country without complying the legal procedures. As it is written in an article of Arabic Press Review, many of the asylum seekers would like to stay in Turkey permanently. The situation further deepens the crisis in the country where unemployment is already higher than the pandemic and the economic crisis and puts citizens in deeper debt. In addition, the epidemic diseases they bring together pose a great threat to the public health and peace. Tuberculosis, which fell to 5 per thousand in 2005, increased to 3.6%. Chickenpox, which fell to 2 per thousand, increased to 4% in 2015. Measles, ca measles cases, which were 11 before 2011, exceeded to 1,000 after migration. Polio, which had been eradicated in Gaziantep, has re-emerged. As a result of these migrations, the demographic structure of many cities on the southern eastern Anatolian border has deteriorated because of the Syrian refugees. If these uncontrolled migrations continue, the Turkish population living there will fall to a minority in coming years. Because of these internal conflicts in the northern Syria, many refugees prefer to stay in these cities instead of staying in camps, so the Turkish population is disappearing in such regions. According to September 2020 data, there are 450,000 Syrians in Gaziantep, 435,530 refugees in Hatay, 420,664 in Şanlıurfa, 249,143 in Adana, and 215,736 Syrians in Mersin. The ratios of these people according to the total registered population of the cities are 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7%, 21.7
13% and 11.7% respectively. Although their current high population poses a great threat to the Turks of the region, the demographic structure in the region may deteriorate further with an increase in refugees at this rate. The most dramatic example summarizing this situation is the words uttered by the current mayor of Hatay. He said that if no action is taken against the situation, the Syrians may become the majority in the city within 10 years and that there may even be a Syrian mayor of the city in the future. Due to the large population of Syrian families compared with Turkish families, they employ their children as fugitive workers instead of sending them to state integration schools. Many malicious companies that take advantage of states' lack of control use these people and this situation versus unemployment and workers' rights. In January 2017, a member of the current ruling party of Turkey, Sheriff Malkoç, said that they see Syrians as cheap labor and they provide great benefits to the economy. Genellikle olumsuzluklar gündeme geliyor ama bir de şöyle bir şey var. Bakın Karadeniz'de fındık veya çay toplanıyor. Veyahut da şimdi Antep'te, Urfa'da fıstık toplanıyor. Ege'de başka üzüm toplanıyor. Ya bizim bu vatandaşlarımızdan 2000 liraya, 3000 liraya çalıştıracak insan bulamıyoruz. Şu anda bu bahsettiğim bölgelerdeki istihdamın, iş gücünün önemli bir kısmını Suriyeli, Suriyeliler karşılıyor. Karşı. Yani şu anda Türkiye'deki... This situation devalues Turkish workers and causes unemployment rates to increase. Although some political groups and people try to imply that these refugees cannot be returned, the clauses from A through G of Article 8 of the Temporary Protection Regulation have given the state the authority to send such persons back if they pose a national threat. Another article similar to the supportive rule is at Article 15 in the law. This means that it is the Turkish government that will decide whether the war is over and whether the humanitarian conditions exist. If a refugee is able to return to this to his or her country for the holidays of Ramadan and Eid al-Adha, it means that there is no element left to threaten the national security of the person in that region. Currently, many Syrians return to their home for these special days and stay there until the holiday ends. This means that there are no hazards or threats which detain Syrians to return back to their country. Apart from this, the idea of integration of Syrians into our country is also defended by many political organizations and people. However, many national factors of Syrians are of the nature to surpass this. The first and most important of these can be shown as the Syrians' adoption of a national state structure and the rejection of Turkish culture. It has been seen in the cases experienced in the Ottoman Empire in the past centuries that it is not possible for the Arabs to exhibit such behavior. Both the ruling party and the main opposition party of the country do not make concrete explanations about sending refugees back even after all this time, and they ignore this problem. The statements made by President Erdogan at the International Favor Awards Ceremony on March 15, 2022 are an indication that the government does not intend to send the Syrians back. Biz seçimi kazandığımızda bu ülkedeki mültecileri ülkelerine göndereceğiz diyorlar. Biz göndermeyeceğiz. Furthermore, the harmonization strategy document and national action plan prepared by the Republican People's Party, the main opposition party of the country, to integrate these people into the country indicates that these people will not be sent back by this party. The definition of people who have immigrated to the country illegally as immigrants in this document implies a message to the citizens that these people can no longer be sent back. In addition to the second article, taking the necessary measures to increase social acceptance towards immigrants statement reinforces this claim. Unfortunately, the passive approaches of both parties to this problem accent the problems that are increasing day by day and put the Turkish nation in trouble. However, the only party that put this problem on its agenda is the Vikri party and its team, which was founded in 2021 under the leadership of Ümit Özda. In order to understand how the Vikri party was founded, we need to go back to 2016. <music> 
He was expelled from the Nationalist Movement Party on 20 October 2016 due to the op his opposition to the internal party administration and he founded the Good Party in 2017 under the leadership of Merat Akshener and other dissidents. In this political structure, he continued to talk about the dangers of this crisis and he resigned from the party in 2021 on the grounds that there were political disagreements and claimed that there were party members of Fethullah terrorist organization in the party. Özda, who founded the Victory Party on August 26, 2021, continues his political life here and is the only politician to explain the importance of the Syrian crisis to Turkish nation. Bizi izleyen seyircilere şunu sormak isterim. Program bittikten sonra lütfen düşünsünler. Bir süre. Neden Zafer Partisi'nin dışında kimse bunları ısrarla dile getirmiyor? Evet beni ilgilendirmiyor. Ben çok Suriyeli'ye kaynaşlaşmıyorum. Olsun 1200 dolar ödedin. 1200 dolar ödedin arkadaşlar Suriyeliler için. Bak bunları hiç eklemiyorum. Sadece Suriyeli sığınmacılar için her Türk vatandaşının cebinden 1200 dolar çıktı. Türk halkının da %85'i sığınmacılar, kaçaklar gitsin diyor. Ben bunun diyor daha fazla bedelini ödemek istemiyorum diyor. Ben diyor kendimi ülkemde ikinci sınıf hissediyorum diyor. Metroda diyor bindiğim zaman Türkiye'de olmadığımı düşünüyorum ve tehdit algılıyorum diyor. Karımı diyor sokakta çıkartıp yürütemiyorum diyor. Kız çocuğum eve geç kaldığında acaba başına bir şey mi geldi diyorum diyor. Oğlum diyor kavga etmesin diye korkuyorum diyor. Kentimin diyor nüfus dengesi değişiyor, azınlığa düşüyorum. Kendi mahallemde azınlıktayım diyor. 10 senede Türkiye'ye 10 senede daha önce olmayan 8 milyon insan geldi. Sığınmacılardan var. Sığınmacılar kaçaklar. Üstüne 3 milyon da Suriye'nin kuzeyinde bakıp besliyoruz. Şimdi bugün enflasyon yüksek. Doğru. Biz bir araştırma yaptık. Zafer Partisi olarak ve gördüğümüz şu e, temel gıda maddelerinde eğer bu 8 milyon insan ülkeden ödenerse yüzde 13 lük bir düşüş olacak. This humanitarian crisis has surrendered the independence of Turkey day after day through the falsified policies of politicians and bureaucrats. Since this crisis was underestimated by government officials, this issue gradually has become a huge quandary that is waiting to be solved. If politicians do not take adequate measures in this regard, the danger of independence that will befall the country may cause bigger issues. The country urgently needs to put an end to the open door policy and take steps to send these people back immediately. Let's see how the fate of the country will be determined in the June 2023 elections and how the situation will evolve. Thank you for your attention and willingness for watching this documentary. I'm Ibrahim Ekmekçi.